This is our third week in a series called No More Excuses. And I'm just curious, are you catching yourself making excuses? Or is somebody else catching you making excuses and then you have to slap them a little bit when they tell you to, when they tell you to quit making excuses? It's, it's easy to see when somebody else is making an excuse, isn't it? When your children are making an excuse, perhaps when your spouse is making an excuse, perhaps in my case, or grand, grandchildren, when they make excuses. Grandchildren are just kind of really funny. They're just, they, they, well, they're not very smart yet. You know, they're just stupid. You know, they just say dumb things. I didn't do that. You know, you're standing there, you know, cookie crumbs on their mouth. Did you eat that cookie? No, I think, no, the little one did it. You know, that kind of like, what's that on your face? Well, not nothing. You're lying to me. So, but it's really difficult to see ourselves making excuses. In fact, we get really good at making excuses. And in fact, some of them even sound reasonable. <clears throat> now, today we're going to learn how Jesus said we could be set free to see. To see things that we don't normally see. Now, have you ever stopped to figure out when did we start lying to ourselves? When, when did we start lying to ourselves? Do, do you remember the first time that you lied to yourself? Perhaps it was something somebody else said to you. You were too fat. You were too tall. You were too short. You were too stupid. You were too whatever. And you bought the lie. And from that point on, do you remember that? Was it clear back in kindergarten or first grade or second grade? Way back when, when you could remember that somebody told you something or you thought something and uh, you began lying to yourself. I, I think, it, I can, for most of us, I think it started pretty early in life. And for many of us, we can remember the, one of the first lies that we believed about ourselves. And then, when was it that we stopped lying to ourselves? I wonder, again, for many folks, uh, that doesn't happen until we stop breathing. We just continue to lie to ourselves. Uh, again, we get pretty good at it. We can, we can usually recognize when we're lying to someone else. Have you caught yourself doing that? You know, it's kind of, um, when we're lying... Um, to someone else, you know, you, there's kind of, I, I don't know, guilty conscience or a little bit like, well, that wasn't true. Or like, you know, when you get pulled over and he says, how fast were you going? And you're going, not very fast. Uh, you know, what's your hurry there, mister? I'm just familiar with that because I've been through that experience a time or two. And you don't want to tell him if you know you were going way over the speed limit. So you say, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Well, you ought to probably pay a little bit more attention. I caught you going, da, 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 and he goes on. It's like, yeah, well, you can tell me, but I'm not going to tell you. Now, again, we can recognize when we're lying to somebody else, but it's much more difficult to catch ourselves when we're lying to ourselves. And, and, and while, while lying to others really is unexcusable, um, it, it's, it's a, at least a little bit understandable why you would lie to somebody else because every once in a while you feel like lying to someone else to get out of a comfortable an uncomfortable situation like the one I just mentioned and you've probably got some other ones where you know if you just and you know it's just a white lie it's just a little thing it's just fudging the truth but you know it'll really make things more bearable if you just lie a little bit is that just me, or can you... You know, if you, I mean, it's not really bad. You know, nobody's going to get hurt much. You know, I mean, so we just kind of do that. And that almost is understandable that you're lying to get out of an uncomfortable situation uh, or, or to protect your reputation. I'm a pastor, so I don't do that much. Yeah. Now, it's not a good way to live in the long run, and I'm not saying it's okay to lie, but, but at least it kind of makes sense. But um, 
when, when we lie to ourselves, that doesn't make any sense at all. Who, who are we lying to? That's just an order of service. I don't need that. I'll have another one. <laughs> it's just, it's crazy to think that we would deceive ourselves, try to lie to ourselves. Who, who's lying to who? How many yous are there? And if you're thinking, I don't ever lie to myself, you just did. <laughs> but you don't know you did because you are so good at it. We all are. Uh, do, you, do you know why we are all so good at deceiving ourselves? It's because we don't call the lies that we tell ourselves about ourselves lies. No, we dignify them and we call them reasons because we are reasonable people. We're not liars. We have reasons. Because we want to be reasonable, uh, because we've met unreasonable people and we don't want to be one of those. So we want to be reasonable. Um, another question for us to wrestle with is, when did we start calling lies reasons? Was that early in life? Maybe a little bit later after we started telling lies in the first place to ourselves. Now here's what it sounds like. Well, why are you late to work? Well, it's those idiotic drivers who won't even go two miles an hour over the speed limit all the way in town down Division Street. They just drive. In fact, some of them drive under the speed limit. What is wrong with those people? So that's my reason. Why were you late? Well, it's because of the drive, the traffic. And if you're in a big city, you can always use the traffic as an example for why you're late or a, a reason. Now, I don't want to admit that I did get up a little later than I could have, uh, and I Twittered a bit, and, and maybe I Instagrammed a bit or checked out the Facebook or went to the news and read a little. I, I don't, all of that's true, but that's not why I'm late. I'm late because of those drivers. It was the traffic. That's what I tell myself. But, but see, that's not the real reason, and you can see through that. My wife sees through it all the time. I hate it. She's just really smart. She knows. It's like she doesn't even have to say anything, and I kind of start to feel guilty just a little bit. <clears throat> That's why I don't let her come to church all the time. Is she here today? <laughs> yeah. So when you tell yourself, the reason I got so mad was, that may not be the reason really why you got so mad. Or the reason I have so much debt is somebody else's issue. Or the reason I don't eat more healthy is, or the reason, and then you can just fill in the blank, or the reason I blank so much is, that may not be the reason that you blank so much. The reason you tell yourself why you do it may not act, be the actual reason at all. The actual reason that you blank too much might be a secret. I bet that a secret that you're trying to keep from yourself so that you don't have to face the uncomfortable truth about you. I blank too much because I'm just lazy. I blank too much because I don't have any self-control. That's just, that just is uncomfortable. You don't want to say that out loud. So instead of telling ourselves the truth about ourselves, we make excuses and we call them reasons. Well, the reason I did that is. And just like you can see through someone else's excuses, they can see through your excuses too. Can't you? 
So, so if we learn to tell ourselves the truth about ourselves, we will be much better off. But that is so easy to say and so difficult to do. And through the years, we've gotten really good at it. So much so that we don't even recognize when we're doing it. Now, God doesn't want us to miss out on the opportunities that he has for us in our lives because we are telling ourselves lies about ourselves. He knows that lies will hold you back. Truth will set you free. And we're going to talk about when Jesus said that. Lies will always hold you back and truth will always set you free. Lies that we believe can control us. They can take charge of our lives. They can become like little kings, little gods that you can't do anything without their permission. They can get in the way of us following Jesus. Lies keep us in the dark so that we can't see what God wants us to see. Here's how you know that's true. You, you can look at the way some people are parenting, for instance, and, and you want to say to them, can't you see what you're doing to your children? Can't you see? And they can't. Um, you look at a marriage. The way a husband treats his wife or a wife treats her husband. And you want to ask, can't, can't you see what you're doing to your marriage? It's obvious. If you continue to do what you're doing right now, it's going to blow up. Can't you see? To someone who is mishandling their money, you want to say, can't you see what's going to happen if you continue to spend like there's no tomorrow? And we do this with our children all the time, but again with spouses and friends. Can't you see? Can't you see in our, I hate to even bring this up, but in our government, you keep spending like there's no tomorrow. It's just not, it's, can't you see what's happening? All you smart people, can't you see? And they can't. They're blinded. Got their blinders on. They're focused on their cause. Can't you see what you're doing to your health? Everybody else can see. Can you not see what you're doing to your health? Are you taking care of your, your not? Can't you, can't you see that? Pretty obvious. Can't you see? Can't you see? Can't you see? And, and you can't. That's why you do what you do. You can't see where you're going. It's like people are wandering around in the darkness. Can't see. But it's evident to everybody around them what's going on. Just not them. And when you have an opportunity to have a conversation with a person who you feel like is maybe walking around in the darkness because maybe you've got a relationship with them, you love them, you're concerned about them, you don't want them to believe lies about themselves or miss out on opportunities. So you have a conversation with them because of that relationship you have and, and you want to help. But, but, but don't be surprised to hear an excuse or a well thought through reason that begins with the word because. Why do you do the case? Well, because I do that because and you'll quickly learn that a because is not always the cause. But we're good at it. We've been doing it for a lot of years. We sing songs about being set free or walking out of the darkness into the light. And you've got to ask your, yourself the question, what does that mean? What do you mean you're set free? Set free from what? What do you mean walking around in the darkness? That's the way everybody does it. Isn't it amazing that 2,000 years ago, Jesus told us what that means? And we've got it in a book called the Bible. 
and we can read it whenever we want to. After we check Instagram and Facebook and all those things that are more important than truth that will set us free. In the 8th chapter of John's Gospel, Jesus talks about this whole truth and freedom and making up excuses and believing lies about ourselves. And he said, and he comes up, this is really bold. Nobody says this, okay? If anybody in this room was to say this, you would say, you're nuts, right? And Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Yeah, yeah. And you know, in verse, uh, chapter 8, verse 12, when Jesus spoke again to the people, he said, I am the light of the world. And and just like you would react if somebody, if I stood up here and told you, I'm the light of the world, you'd say, cuckoo, cuckoo. What are you talking about? Nobody talks like that. You don't talk like that. That's, that's crazy talk. <laughs> Unless it's true. M maybe. Maybe it's true. H how can one man be the light of the whole world? Come on. Most of the world hasn't even been discovered yet when Jesus said these, world, these words. Why would he say that? But, but what if it's true? What if Jesus really came to planet Earth to reflect what God is like so that we would know who God likes? What if Jesus actually came to lead those who would choose to follow him out of darkness into light? What if that's really true? To lead them through the excuses that hold them back and cause them to miss out on all that God has for them. What if that's why he came as the light of the world? What if he came to light up your world? That's what he claimed to do. Could that be true? Could it really be true that he could lead us out of darkness? Darkness sometimes that we don't even know that we're in. We just are going through life. We're not trying to walk in the dark. We're just being normal people, right? We say... And then he invites us, this great invitation, whoever follows me, in verse 12, the second half of verse 12, whoever follows me. He says, I am the light of the world, but, but if you want to experience what I have come to light up, then you'll need to follow me. Uh, Jesus doesn't need any more admirers. Everyone admires Jesus. He was a good guy. He was a good teacher. He was a good, wow, he's, yeah. Most people believe that Jesus lived. It's in history books and it's in the Bible. And, okay, yeah, Jesus was here. Many people believe in Jesus, however they define that. And they define that. I believe in Jesus. And then they go on to define what they mean by that. But Jesus' invitation into light is to follow him. Do we follow him? And he says, if we follow him, we won't walk in darkness, but we'll have the light of life. Whoever follows me, Jesus says, will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of of life. Jesus is saying, I just want you to say yes to me. Just follow me. And when you do, then I'm going to show you some things that, that um, you, you've been, things that have been holding you back. Things that you've been missing out on. Things that you've been giving excuses to and making you less of the person that I want you to be. I created you and it's very special where there's nobody you are than you and you're missing out on it. You're believing some lies. You're telling yourself some lies about yourself. Now just the next verse. The religious leaders in the crowd responded right out loud. You're a liar. 
Now, I'm so glad that you guys don't do that to me. <laughs> Especially my wife. You know, I'm just really glad. If she was to say that, that would wreck the whole sermon. I'm going to do this, you liar! That's what the religious leaders did to Jesus. I'm the light of the world, follow me. And they said, you're a liar. You don't know how they said it? Very religiously. They said, in verse 13, the Pharisees challenged him. Here you are, appearing as your own witness. Your testimony is not valid. You're a liar. You're not telling us the truth. You're, you're not the light of the world. Come on, get real. You're crazy. You can't help us see anything. There are, are still these folks around today, aren't there? I mean, this whole religion thing, you know, it's just crazy. It's just crazy, and there's all kinds of different things. And Jesus is just one of many religions, and it's just crazy talk. But Jesus is convinced that what he's saying is true. And so what they said didn't slow him down even one beat. Jesus says, if you hold to my teaching, you are really my disciples. Verse 31, Jesus said, if you hold to my teaching, you are really my disciples. So what if somebody says they're a Christian but doesn't do what Jesus says? But I am. I'm a Christian. I, I, I believe in God. I believe I just don't do what he says. If, if you will do what I say, Jesus said, if you will commit your life to following me, if you'll, if you'll organize your life around what I'm saying, then that means you're really my followers. And if you'll do that, and they go, no, notice this is a conditional if then. If you'll do that, if you'll follow me, if you'll organize your, your life around the truth that I'm sharing, if you'll follow me, even before you have all the answers to questions that you have about me, then, he says, you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Verse 32, then you will know the truth, and the truth will say, how, how, when, when will we know the truth? When we choose to follow him. If you follow me, then you'll recognize what's real. And what is simply made up. You, you'll be set free to see what is true and what's a lie. You'll be set free to be everything that God has called you to be. God will set you free to see him as he truly is. Some of you, that would be your testimony. I've just seen God in ways that I have never seen God work before. It's just amazing. God's opening up your eyes so you can see. And if you can't see... And it seems like you're walking around in the darkness. Jesus would say, well, you're not, you're not following. Oh, but I believe. But are you following? Yeah, but I go to church. But are you following? Are you doing what I'm telling you to do? But I'm, I, I, know, two, I know two Bible verses. I know. I memorized the books of the Bible when I was seven. But are you following? Today, are you following? Well, you know, life is kind of tough. And my, my spouse, well, my kids, well, I don't because <laughs> God wants to set you free to see him as he really is, and to see yourself as you really are, and to see the people around you as God sees them. Do people around you just drive you crazy? 
Mm -hmm. Do some people just drive you nuts? Every day. Every day, thank you. <laughs> Every, that's better than you're a liar. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Every day. And it's like, have you ever asked God to help you see people the way he sees them? Jesus said that one time. He looked out on the crowd and he said, you know, they're just like a bunch of sheep that need a shepherd. They don't know what to do. Just, they're just stupid. They just run around. They bang into things and they run into fences and they fall into holes and they, they'll jump off cliffs. If one will go, then the other one will It's like, they're just not very smart. And that's the way Jesus looked at people. And he loved them, but they were like sheep without a shepherd. Jesus will help us see our excuses for what they are if we will follow him. Now, you, you will never, never guess how the crowd that day, when Jesus spoke these words that day, how they responded to what he was saying. You know what they did? They started making excuses. Right there. Right in front of Jesus. Right when he was saying these words. They said, but we don't need to be free. That work? I come to set you free, but we don't need to be free. Verse 33, they answered him, we are Abraham's descendants and have never been slaves to anyone. How can you say we shall be set free? Now, this is just an amazing response. If you know the history of the Israelites at all, the nation of Israel, when they, when they say this that day, they have a Roman governor. A Roman governor. Who's in charge? Rome. Nobody's ever held us captive. We're Abraham's kids. And you go back to Abraham, you go back through their history, they've been slaves off and on all throughout their history. Do you remember Big Mo? Moses, what's he famous for? Moses led the children out of slavery in Egypt for 400 years. But no, we've never been, we've never been slaves. They said, we're Abraham's descendants. We've never been slaves of Amberwood. Hmm. Well, what they're saying isn't even true. They're lying to themselves. Oh, yes, you've been slaves. And you are right now. They're simply making excuses. Excuses are very seldom true. And what about you and me? We might as well make this real personal, right? We would never do something like that. Do we recognize that we need to be set free? Is there that recognition that we need to be set free? Do, do we say, well... I'm not as bad as so-and-so. I, I, I'm, you know, oh, I can quit whenever I want. I can quit doing that. I can start doing that whenever I want. I just don't want to. But, but nobody's my boss. I, I can do whatever I want to do. I'm American. Maybe. <laughs> I'm free. We like our freedom. Don't we? I'm not a slave to anything. Perhaps we need to hear what Jesus says next to them. He says, so you've never, you've never had a problem with being a slave to anything, huh? Okay. Um, he says, everyone who sins is a slave to sin. Anybody ever sinned? Anybody? Okay, oh, isn't that something? That we sin? Everyone who sins is a slave to sin. And Jesus replied in verse 34, Very truly I tell you. Which means, this is really true. Don't, don't, I mean, everything that Jesus says is true, but when he has to say, listen to me, it's like he grabs your chin. Hey, listen to me. Listen to me. This is really true. Now, we do that with two-year-olds and three-year-olds and five-year-olds, but very seldom when we're 
mature adults does anybody have to say, listen to me. I mean, it's, it's almost, doesn't that make you feel like you're a little kid again? And Jesus is saying, listen to me. Listen to me. Everyone who sins is a slave to sin. Have you ever done something that you knew you shouldn't do and you did it anyway? Yeah, probably. Yeah, Mason did once. Okay, Mason. Okay, how about, how about, have you ever done something you knew you shouldn't do and you did it over and over and over again and you knew you should stop but you wouldn't stop? What's that? That's called being a slave to sin. You're not in charge. Something else is. I think we all know what it means to be enslaved by sin. Yeah, I really shouldn't do that, but... Well, I really should. Well, nobody can see. Well... And then I think Jesus, right at the end of that, because all of us would go down that rabbit hole of sin going, oh, uh, yeah, I'm no good and I'm lousy and I never have been any good. And, da, da, da. and I think Jesus smiled and then he said this, if the Son sets you free, you'll be free. So if the Son sets you free, verse 36, you will be free. And then he throws in that little word, indeed, for real. I'm not messing with you. He starts off that verse, very truly, I tell you, it's really, really true. And if the sun sets you free, you are free, baby. You are free. Really. It's not just a religious game. It's not just something you hope for. You can be free. Now, if you and I choose to follow the light of the world and we invite the light of the world to light up our darkness our excuses to light them up God if I'm lying to myself would you just light me up he will and then he says we will be truly free because we won't be believing lies anymore. We won't be making up excuses or being reasonable people. We won't be making up reasons for why we can't follow Jesus. Well, I mean, Jesus, you just don't get it. I mean, you know, you were here 2,000 years ago, and you did some cool stuff back then, but you just don't understand my life. My life is pretty special. That's why they call me Special Ed. You know that, right? <laughs> I'm pretty special. I mean, I'm not like you. I, I'm, I'm different. And my wife says, amen. Amen. I know she would. Yeah. We all think we're pretty special sometimes. When we're set free, we will be free to name an excuse for what it actually is. That's just an excuse. You'll catch it before it ever leaves your lips. Oh, uh, yeah, that's not true. You'll be free to acknowledge an insecurity that's holding you back. Do you know why I do that? It's because I'm insecure. I think I'm going to look stupid. I always think I look stupid. I'm just not going to do that. Just call it for what it is. You'll be free to see that it's fear. that st- I'm afraid. I'm afraid it's not going to work out. I'm afraid I'm going to... I'm such a loser. I'm just afraid. You'll be free to admit when you're wrong. Nobody admits when they're wrong, right? You, just don't, you don't do that. Hey, write this down. I have this on the bottom of your insert there. If you can't see you're wrong, you'll be wrong your entire life. If you can't see you're wrong, I can't see. Can't you see? Can't you see what you're doing? No, I can't. what? I'm not doing that. It's not then you'll be wrong your entire life. If you can't see it, you won't change it, will you? Can't you see 
what you're doing and where it's leading. If you continue to do what you're doing right now, then you will continue to get what you're getting right now. And that will lead you down a path. Can't, can't you see that? If you can't see, you're walking in darkness in Jesus' words. If you can't see, you're walking in darkness. That's why Jesus came. Because we're walking in darkness. We can ignore him. Yeah, light of the world. He's not the light of my world. Can be. Someone once said, do you know what it feels like to be wrong? It feels exactly like being right. Because you don't know you're wrong. You know, as a grandpa, I used to be a whole bunch smarter before they had all this stuff on the internet. So if your grand, my grandsons would walk up and ask me something about an airplane, I'm a pilot, and so I could ask about an airplane, and then they could look it up and find out, I didn't know what I was talking about. That's not right at all. Here, look at... If you don't know you're wrong, then you, you won't make any changes. P- people have excused God away because they didn't know they were wrong. There's a better way. So here's what Jesus says. I'll wrap up with this. I am the light of the world. You're in darkness. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness. Your choice. Walk in darkness or follow me. It's up to you. I love you. I care about you. It's your choice. But whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. I will light up your life. Interested? If you hold to my teaching, which is another way of saying, if you follow me, you are really my disciples followers, then, and only then, you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Don't just call yourself a Christian, or a church person, or a religious person. Don't just believe that Jesus existed. Don't just believe in, if believe in doesn't include following and doing what he says. We have a word for people who say one thing and do something else, right? It's called a hypocrite. And then we go around feeling guilt. Oh, I'm a hypocrite. Oh, I'm no good. I'll never be any good. And then we beat ourselves all up. And Jesus said, no, 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 no. I'll set you free. Let me shine some light into that little hypocrite. Why are you being a hypocrite? Well, it's just so hard, and I don't think anybody will like me, and I won't be accepted, and yeah, we go down that rabbit trail, and really, I'm afraid. I don't have all the answers to the Bible until I have all the answers. I can't say anything about Jesus. That's a lie. So, are you following Jesus? Will you start following him? If you do... Very truly, I say unto you, to use Jesus' words, I I will flat light up your world. Indeed, I will light up your world. Your choice. I love you. Follow me. Do what I say to do. Now, I'm going to have, I didn't talk to Judy before this, but I'm going to have her, we're going to turn on that music quietly, and then I think if you just go to this slide that's on right now, on top of the music, the music won't shut off until you get to the end. So if you go to, when, when I have you do this, if you'll put this, this slide back on right over the top of the music, you know what I'm talking about, don't you? It's like, yeah, dummy. Okay. Are, are you following Jesus? Let me give you a minute. Just to respond, respond to what you've just heard. Jesus said, you'll know the truth and the truth will set you free. Or 
you can say, I don't need, I don't need that. No, I got my life together. I'm not walking in darkness. And Jesus would say, can't you see? Can't you see? Let me, let, let me shine a little light in there. So take a minute, just ask Jesus. Jesus, what is it that I can't see? And I will leave the scripture up here once the music's playing. I'll put that up so you can kind of read through that if you want to. And then I'll come back and pray in just a minute, okay? Let's do that. Let's... What, what a wonderful name is the name of Jesus. Because you, Jesus, have come to set us free. You've come to shine light into our lives so that we don't have to walk around in darkness and confusion, wondering what's up and what the future holds. We, we know who holds the future. You do. And you've told us if we'll, if we'll follow you, that, that you, you will reveal to us truth, truth about ourselves truth about the world, truth about death, truth about life. I pray that you would help us to follow you, Jesus, as the light of the world so we don't have to stumble around in darkness. And God, I pray that you would reveal that to us. Some of us sitting here today are just kind of feeling like everything's dark and I don't know what to do and I'm confused angry but I don't even know who to be angry at I just life doesn't make any sense that's darkness and I pray God that you would shine your light into that darkness today light up our lives with your truth I pray so that we can be set free and Lord you told us to, to hold on to your teaching so that we can know the truth and be set free. So I pray that today as we walk out of this room, we, we would take that next step, whatever that next step is that we need to do so that we can know your truth. Commit ourselves to following you maybe in one specific way. Help us to do that. God, I thank you that you are the God of truth. You are the God of freedom. You are the God of hope. You are the God of peace. And so, Lord, I pray that you would help us to follow you so that we can experience all that you have for us. God, thank you for your truth. I pray that you'd help us to apply it to our lives. And it's in Jesus' name that we pray all these things. And everybody said, amen, amen and amen.